um, we can all catch up. So, all right, we are here seated. We're going to begin with breath work and then go into our co-contraction work. So all of that core awareness. So starting and seated, and if you're feeling like you need a little elevation, you could um, you could sit on a pillow or bolster or block. All right, so start by closing your eyes and then feel the weight of your sit bones underneath you. And then keep your spine nice and tall. Think about weighting down the sacrum as you reach the back of your head up at the same time creating length from both sides of your spine. Notice if you're waiting more on one side, on one sit bone, see if you can counterbalance and notice what happens around your spine, your hips. I feel like my lower back, I feel like there's more activation when I press down. And then you also wanna think about expanding your rib cage. So making it wide like a balloon, when you inflate the balloon, the rib cage expands out. And as you exhale, drawing everything in, condensing to the center line of your spine. Inhale. And active exhale, using that dynamic core to draw inward. Inhale, expand your ribs out wide to the sides of the room. And exhale, stay tall, using the deep core, your diaphragm. Continue this breath. So your inhale goes through your nose and your exhale goes out of the opening of your mouth. Good, now we'll go into co-contraction. So you wanna think about your pelvic floor, the space between your sitting bones. And it's basically like the shape of a hammock from your pubic bone to your tailbone. So it's that entire space that keeps your base together, the base of your pelvis, your root chakra also. So I want you to start thinking about drawing from that space. So drawing up as you exhale. And when you inhale, move your breath down into the pelvic floor, down into the pelvic bowl. As you exhale, lifting upward, inward, like you're, like you're picking up like a claw from a, you know, one of those toy machines. Or you can think of something a little more gentle, you know, like a, like a gentle lift of a circus tent at the center. That's your pelvic floor. Some people, some teachers, um, prenatal teachers, I've heard them say, imagine picking up a blueberry. So very gentle, right? It's not like a, it's not like exerting as, mu as much as possible. It's much more subtle. And this is going to teach your body how to turn on your core. We'll do that one more time. Inhale, expand your rib cage, move down into your pelvic bowl. As you exhale, feel that lifting from the pelvic floor to create more of this 
condensing around your core, your abdominal cylinder that wraps all around you. All right, go ahead and uh, open the eyes if they're closed. And by the way, this is Callie. She's enjoying her, what is this, yak's milk? Yeah, she loves her yak's milk. Okay, so we're gonna do rotating arms. So start with your arms out in your peripheral vision here. So you're bringing them kind of like at a 30 degree angle out from the arms. So keep up nice and tall, nice and straight. And you wanna rotate one thumb down. So you feel that work, that internal rotation on one side. And then the other thumb is gonna go up. So these are your rotating arms. And then switch. Good. So I'm doing this in the peripheral vision, the pl scapular plane. So my arms are more forward here. And it's because this is where your scapula feels really anchored on your back ribs. And I want you to think about rotating from your scapula out through your pinky finger. So your shoulder blade tip is associated with your pinky finger. Start from the scapula and then wrap out into the fingertips. Start from the scapula, rotate from the fingertips. Feel the pressure on the back of your ribs here. And continue focusing on your breath. And Pilates, Joseph Pilates, the creator, he started teaching this his method in uh, 1918 during the influenza, the Spanish flu. And that was only a hundred years ago. <laughs> So what he really focused on was the breath. And that, just so you know, the Spanish flu was also a respiratory virus, very similar to what we're experiencing now with um, this coronavirus. And he really learned that there was a lot of value in focusing on a controlled breath. That by creating space in the lungs and diaphragm that we're able to energize and activate deep fibers of our lungs, of our organs. And because of his method, all of his clients, you could also, you know, call them patients because a lot of them were sick and they came to him and they recovered. And his methods are still here a hundred years later. So it's really amazing the power of our body when we can access deep awareness and control. All right, beautiful rotating arms. Now we'll take this into spinal rotation. So keep your arms where they are in their scapular plane. Stay nice and tall, zip up from your, your pelvic floor. And then start to rotate to your right. Take your hands down. So one hand on your knee, the other hand behind you. And then inhale, lift up long through your spine. Exhale, rotate from your upper ribs, your heart. And then see if you can turn your head to look back. One more, inhale, long spine. Exhale, rotate. Really good, inhale, come to center, take the arms up. Keep the anchor of the shoulder blades. Exhale, rotate to the left, take your hands down. Inhale, co-contract, lift up long. Exhale, twist from the upper rib cage, directing your heart towards the side. Inhale, long spine. Exhale, rotate. And now inhale, come into center. All right, so we're gonna do the full spinal twist. Take an inhale, take the arms up into their scapular plane. Exhale, rotate without changing the hands. So we're using the upper rib cage to rotate. Again, inhale, long spine, anchor the shoulder blades. 
Exhale, rotate deeper. One more. Inhale, long spine from the back of your spine. Exhale, rotate, turn the heart towards the side. Inhale to center. So we're using our deep, deep oblique work. Exhale, rotate to the left. Keep weighted in the sit bones. Inhale, long spine. Exhale, rotate the heart. You want to really feel the, that we're anchored in the shoulder blades as we rotate. Okay, inhale, come into center. Now we'll take the legs out into a little bend in the knees here. So keep a bend in your knees. Anchor down into your heels. Imagine that you're trying to like shovel with your heels. That's kind of the energy behind it. You're working the back of your legs when you do that. So press down into the heels, feel the hamstrings firing up. And then we'll go into what's called saw. So we take this rotation. We rotate towards the leg, facing your leg. And then take the outside arm back. And then let's do a little cervical nod. Lengthen from the back of your spine to curl your front body and reach past your foot. Good. And then your hand is facing away from your foot. And then we do two pumps across. Pump, pump, or saw, saw. And then inhale, articulate the spine up, bring the arms into center. Exhale, rotate the other way to the outside arm back. And then inhale, cervical nod. Create that curve through the thoracic as you reach past your foot, and then saw, saw. Inhale, articulate up the spine, arms to center. Exhale, rotate first, and then cervical nod. Inhale, reach forward as the other arm reaches back, and then saw, saw. Inhale, articulate up the spine. Exhale, rotate, switch the arm. Inhale, nod, reach forward, exhale, saw. Saw. Inhale, articulate up to center arms. Here we go again. Exhale, rotate, switch. Inhale, nod, round the body. Exhale, saw, saw. Inhale, articulate up to center. Exhale, rotate, reach the arm. And then inhale, nod the nose, round. Exhale, saw, saw. I know. And then inhale to center. Good, you can go ahead and rest here. Feel free to shake out the legs if you need to. We're gonna make our way down to our backs. All right, come on down to a supine home position. So your knees are gonna be bent. We're gonna have your knees still bent here and your feet flat on the floor. All right. Excuse me, Callie. There you go. She loves her toys. So many toys. Sometimes I wish I could just be a dog or a cat, right? I don't have to worry about anything. <laughs> just enjoy life and play. Sleep and play. That would be amazing. Can I have that life? <laughs> I want to be a cat. All right. So we're going to start with knee sway. Bring your legs together, your feet together, knees together. And I want you to start by connecting into your spine on the floor. So your anchor points, the sacrum, the back ribs, back of your head. Okay, those are all your anchor points. Think about keeping the legs active by gentle, a gentle squeeze. And then we'll take the legs a little bit, just a little bit to the side. So you're taking one hip up, but you keep the ribs down. That's the difference. And that's challenging to keep the ribs down. And then come into center. Exhale the other direction. One hip comes up. The ribs stay down. So the work is in the obliques because of the ribs staying down. Exhale to center. Inhale, long spine. Exhale the other way. Keep the legs together. Inhale, press the ribs down into the mat. Exhale to center. Inhale, long spine. 
Exhale, knees sway. Inhale, connect the ribs down. Exhale, draw the hips to center. Inhale, long spine. Exhale, knee sway. Inhale, press the ribs into the mat. Exhale to center. Inhale, long spine. Exhale, knee sway. Inhale, connect the ribs down. Exhale, center. Continue on your own. Go at a nice, steady pace. We don't really need to rush. We want to go mindfully so we can feel what's happening deep within the body. I'm a very kinesthetic learner, so I tend to close my eyes. <clears throat> if you're more of a, an audio auditory learner, you can ask yourself, questions about your alignment, like, am I connecting my ribs down as I knee sway? And if you're visual, feel free to watch as I demo. And also you could use a mirror too. That's really, really useful for visual learners. All right, one more time on each side. All right, we're taking it into center. And then next we'll go into knee fold. So draw it above your hip. Your foot is relaxed. And then draw the other leg up, knee over hip. Hold on one second. My phone is ringing. Okay. We're still good. Callie has another toy. <laughs> There's like three bones in this room. <laughs> All right. So we got the knees over the hips. All right. So start with your shins, bring them parallel to the floor, and then grip with your feet. Imagine that you're trying to hold something with your feet. So your, toe, your toes are pointed, and then anchor your sacrum. Anchor the back of your ribs. Keep the back of your head grounded. And then weight in the femurs. Really sink them down without lifting your sacrum. Now, let's start by tapping the foot down and up. Pardon me, Callie. Tap and lift. Tap. Now, this is important. So your co-contraction happens as the leg comes up because you don't want to just use your hip flexors, okay? We want to feel the core supporting us to do the work. Come over here. That's it, you're just going into a simple toe tap. Sacrum is heavy. We're just going nice and steady. There's no right, there's no rushing, there's no race, there's no finish line. We're just tuning into the body, getting into some deeper, deeper awareness, finding our core, our stable body. And getting that co-contraction to work, right? We wanna feel the pelvic floor lifting in as you exhale to bring the leg in, inhale out, exhale in. Good. All right, let's take the legs together. Keep the legs together. And then we're gonna go down and up with two legs. If doing two legs is feeling like a lot, feel free to go back to alternating legs. 
Okay, we want to keep the 90 degree knees. That's how we challenge our core, right? Keeping the legs as one piece. We're also working our adductors our in our thighs when we keep the legs together, which is a great way to activate the core. So your core kind of starts, you think about it, starts from your inner thighs. And then it goes up into the pelvic floor and then goes into the cylinder of your abdominal wall. Really feel the ground under you, the anchoring happening in your sacrum, your ribs, your head. Two more. Good. Hold here, we're gonna take the knees wide. Now you're touching the inner edges of the feet together, trying to still grab with your feet so that Arches are lifting, the arches are engaged. Now we tap and come to center. Inhale, exhale in. Inhale down, exhale in. Really pay attention to your sacrum. It's going to want to lift, but you're using that deep core, that pelvic floor work to hold the hips stable. so great about this is that we don't even need to do a ton of crunches to feel our core. We just have to tune in, feel the body, feel how it works. Last four. Three, two, and one. Good, now you can let the feet down. Let your legs rest a little. Knees bent, your supine home position. Weight in the heels, weight in your sacrum. Let the femurs move down. All right, so next is head floats. Start by nodding your nose down, like you're about, you're holding a uh, peach under your chin. Exhale, lift off the shoulder blades. Your head, you're looking between your legs now. And then your arms can come floating off the ground. Keep your elbows straight and anchor the shoulder blades by reaching them down and wide. Inhale, lower bone by bone, articulate. And then inhale, nod your nose. Exhale, curl up. Find your lower ribs pressing down. Inhale, create length. Exhale, articulate down. Inhale, nod your nose. Exhale, curl. Inhale, grow longer. Exhale, moving down. Keep it going. Taking your time. Remember that it's about the mindfulness behind the movement. And every inhale is an opportunity to grow long from the back of your spine. Do four more. One more time, inhale, nod your nose. Exhale, curl. Inhale, long spine. Exhale, move it all down. All right, we've got our head float. We're ready to add it all together. Take your hands to the base of your skull. So interlace your fingers, press them up against the base of your skull, and then bring your elbows into your scapular plane. Press your shoulder blades 
gently into your back ribs as you bring the low ribs down, sinking your sternum. Inhale, nod your nose. Exhale, float your head. Now we take the legs and do our tabletop, point the toes, activate your arches. Here we go. We go into cross to the opposite elbow, or opposite knee, while the leg taps. And then center, rotate, and tap. Center, rotate. Center, rotate. Exhale, twist. You know what? I'm going to switch that. It's an inhale to twist because it feels good to rotate on an inhalation. And then it's an exhale to center. Now you can take this up one more level, one more variation to straight leg. Your choice. And then we also have a third option, third variation with straight legs. You take it to the variation that suits you, that feels the most mindful, but challenging. Keep sinking the sternum. Good, four. Three, keep the hips stable. Two, and one, lower down, beautiful. Keep your head down here. Press your arms into the mat along your sides. And we'll take the left leg up towards the sky. Anchor your femur down. So you have the weight of your femur going into the mat and your left leg is as, as straight as you can. We're gonna rotate internal and external rotation. I've got my fluffy socks here. Hopefully you can see what's happening. <laughs> it's like a, it's almost like turning a doorknob. Or I also like to think of it as a mortar and pestle. Right, if you're smashing some guacamole, that's kind of what we're doing with our femur bone here. We're getting into lots of good muscle tissue around the pelvis. Four, three, two, and one. Now we've moved leg circles. So take the leg out, externally rotate it and then cross your midline internal rotation. So external rotation to go out, internal rotation to go in. So what I love about this is it challenges your pelvis to keep it from rocking. And you're thinking about the femur, the side bone, everything working together. The other leg is staying really grounded, staying really stable. It's hard though, right? We still have to use a lot of the, the work. Okay, one more circle this way. And then we switch direction, internal rotation to go across the midline, external rotation to go out wide. If it helps you, you can always take your hands to your pelvis to make sure it's staying stable. Cause you'll feel it, it really does rock a bit. <laughs> There's like that pelvic floor work that we were doing is really helpful here. I'm already feeling this all around the hip joint. Lots of good work happening here. One more time. Good. Now you can bend your knee and bring it down. Take the other leg up. Right leg to the sky, internal, external. Rotate, rotate. Turning the doorknob. Smashing some guacamole. 
What else do we use for the mortar and pestle? What else can we put in there? Cinnamon. <laughs> I want to start learning more recipes to, to use my mortar and pestle. I don't use it enough. <laughs> it's good for for lots of like spices. I got to learn more about this, about the spices. All right. Now we're going to move into our leg circles, external rotation out to the side, internal rotation across the midline. Again, check in with your hips. Make sure they're not rocking. Keep them really grounded. You'll feel the left inner thigh helping you. And you'll also really get that deep pelvic floor work, co-contraction, that will help keep your whole torso really steady. Okay, let's switch direction, cross the midline, and then over. See if you can stay weighted in the femur, even though you are moving it. You wanna keep the femur down, even though we're rotating. Weight in the sacrum. Four, three, two, and one. Go ahead and bend your knee. Nicely done. Ah, let's turn around. You can just flip around here. Is she looking at, oh, the light on this wall? <laughs> so coming down to prone, this is a really nice sensation after all that supine work. So we'll do some quad stretch first. Take one foot and hold with one or two hands. Bring your knees together. Press your pubic bone down as you pull your foot. Keep pressing down with the pelvis. Think about using your glutes to help you. And then we'll switch. Take the other foot. Keep the knees together. Stay nice and long through your spine here. <sighs> Press down into the hips as you reach your knee back. All right, go ahead and release the foot. So we'll go into body float. So start with your um, start with the arms by your sides, palms facing the legs. Now your shoulder blades need to anchor. Reach them down and wide across your back as you press your hands gently to your thighs. Keep your toes pointed as you press a little bit into the floor with the tops of your feet. And then I really do find the challenge is in keeping the shoulder blades anchored. They like to just kind of drop. So think about your arms staying active your shoulder blades anchored down and wide. Inhale, create length through your spine as you keep the pubic bone pressing down into the floor. Bury it, bury the sacrum. Connect all those bolts of your pelvis. And the bolts too are your, your femurs, the greater trochanter on the sides of your hips here. 
So think about that connection. Exhale, lift up the head, float your head, your chest. Keep the hands gently pressed into your thighs. Inhale, grow longer. Exhale, lower. Inhale, long spine. Exhale, lift the head and chest. You're thinking about a marble that's rolling down your neck. Exhale, come on down. Inhale, long spine. Exhale, lift up. From your core, you're holding yourself. And come on down. All right, we're gonna do the low body. Inhale, long spine. Remember to bury your sacrum. Use your glutes. Exhale, lift your legs only. Feel the work from the back of your legs as you reach energetically out through your toes. Inhale here, long spine. Exhale, lower. Inhale, lengthen first. Exhale, lift. Inhale, grow longer. Exhale, lower. Inhale, grow long. Exhale, lift. Inhale, grow even longer, but keep the pubic bone down. Exhale, lower. Okay, we're ready for the full body. Inhale, long spine. Exhale, lift upper and lower body. Keep the hands gently pressing into the leg. Inhale, grow longer. This is so good for us. Exhale, lower down. We're working against gravity, right? It's a good thing. Inhale, long spine, shoulder blades anchored. Exhale, lift up. Remember not to collapse the low back. Keep bearing the sacrum using your low glutes, pressing pubic bone down. Exhale, lower. One more time, inhale, grow long first. Bury the sacrum, exhale, lift up. Use the back body to work. Your back body is so strong. We call it the posterior chain. And exhale, come all the way down. Yay, feel free to shake it off if you need to. All right, we're going to Sphinx. Make sure you've got enough room in front of you. So you wanna be able to have your arms straight. And my mat is pretty slip, slippy. Um, I think if you are on a carpet or something that's not as slippery, you could put a towel, a, a towel that can slide on the carpet. Okay. All right, so this is an active sphinx, different than like a yoga sphinx. We're gonna move in and out of it. So inhale, grow nice and long first. As you exhale, start to lift your head and then slide your elbows under your shoulders and you'll feel the bearing of the sacrum. Uh, and I use that cue because it feels like it's really turning on the deep glute muscles when you do that. So I think about my glute creases, the ones connected to my hamstrings. That's where I want to work. Take an inhale to grow longer through your spine, shoulder blades anchored down. Exhale, slide the arms forward as you articulate down your spine. Inhale, long spine. Exhale, lift up, slide the elbows. Now anchor those shoulder blades down and wide. It's kind of challenging to anchor the shoulder blades in this position. Bury the sacrum. Inhale, grow long. Exhale, slide the arms. Inhale, grow long. Exhale, lift up, slide the elbows. Press the elbows down as you anchor the shoulder blades. Inhale, grow longer. Exhale, slide the elbows. Make sure you're not feeling this in your low back. You're getting all of the work in your core. Inhale, grow long. Exhale, lift up. Find your core. Use your core contraction to help bring everything in. Condensing. Anchor shoulder blades. Lift up long. Exhale. Forward. We're going to do two more. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. One more, inhale, 
Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Good challenge, right? Okay, so next is single leg kick. Take your one cheek, your face cheek to the floor. Take your hands into an interlace onto your low back. All right, so what we do is take one, we're gonna do a single leg kick. So take one leg and bending the knee, your heel towards your hip, just like in quad stretch, keep pressing the pubic bone down to get that nice stretch through the quad. Okay, so it's really about creating length. And then pump your leg in twice and straighten and then uh, continue with the same leg, same side, pump twice, inhale, stretch, and then lower. Inhale, long spine. Exhale, pump, pump. Inhale, stretch. Exhale, lower. Inhale, long spine. Exhale, pump, pump. Inhale, stretch. Exhale, lower. One more time. Inhale, long spine. Exhale, pump, pump, kick, kick. Inhale, stretch. And exhale, lower. Now just turn your cheek the other side. It's actually really good for the cervical spine to turn your head. It's like a, it's like a, you know, release in the spine. Okay. Take your other leg, pump it in twice. Inhale, stretch. Exhale, lower. Inhale, create length. Exhale, kick, kick. Inhale, stretch. Exhale, lower. Keep anchoring into the pelvis, into your bolts. Inhale, stretch. Exhale, lower. Inhale, long spine. Exhale, kick, kick. Inhale, stretch. Exhale, lower. Inhale, long spine. Exhale, kick, kick. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, lower. Two more. Inhale. Exhale, kick, kick. Inhale. Exhale, inhale, exhale, kick, kick, inhale, and exhale, lower down. All right, good work there. We're going to make our way up into seated now. <sighs> Back to seated. Take your feet flat, knees bent, and then you want to feel the weight of your sit bones here, which can be challenging if you're tight in the hamstrings. So you could sit on a bolster. See if you can grow nice and tall, nice and upright here. Lift up from the abdominal wall, find your co-contraction. And then we'll move into a rollback. Keep your hands where they are as you curl your pelvis into north and then lengthen from the back of your spine. So the back of your head, reaching away from your sacrum. Take an inhale, exhale, hinge from your hips, bend the elbows, inhale, articulate up to seated. Exhale, curl the tail, find your C curve, inhale, grow long, exhale, hinge, inhale, articulate. So we're moving the spine with core work at the same time. C curve, inhale, grow long, exhale, hinge, inhale, grow tall. Do two more. Exhale, curl, find your core, find your C curve. You can try this holding the hands off for a moment. Good, and then bring the hands in to hinge. Inhale, lengthen. Think about your core, not your hip flexors. Exhale, curl. Find your co-contraction lifting up like a wave, lifting your ribs away from your thighs, and then hinge. Inhale to seated. Beautiful. Now we get to go into rolling. So rolling is an active C-curve. You have to really think about holding that C-curve with the co-contraction, with bringing the ribs away from the thighs. So it's a lot of that focus of the core. Let's start with uh, the knees bent, the hands on the outsides of the ankles. 
and keep your feet together. Your knees are wide, not super wide, but they're pressing into your arms. And then find your C curve. So the top of the torso is the same as it was in your rollback. Here we go. We're going to go to our shoulder blades and roll up. So come to the shoulder blades. And then hold at the top, feet don't touch the ground. Inhale back, exhale forward. Inhale, go long, exhale, co-contract center. Inhale, exhale. It's kind of fun, right? Just have fun with it. The challenge is to keep your C curve. Your core has to work to do that. Good, two more. Keep looking between your thighs. Beautiful, let's do one more, just cause it's fun. Whoop. All right, hold here. Hold your feet off the floor, just feel that C curve working your deep, deep core muscles. Stay for one more breath. Maybe if you're feeling excited, you could take the feet up a little more. You could see how that feels. Maybe you can straighten the legs. One breath here. See if you can lift the chest. Awesome. All right, bend the knees. Good work. Yay, we get to come back to our um, mat. So pelvic bowl series. So for pelvic bowl, I want you to think about your, your head is like your body's a compass and your head is north and your feet are south. Okay. And then, um, so this compass is sitting on your pelvis, but it's facing the ceiling. <laughs> So west is your right. Yeah, west is to your right, east is to your left. Don't get too worked up about which direction is which. I'll just cue right and left. But that is sort of the idea of the, of the compass. Okay, so we'll start with north-south. So we're going to go into north tilt by curling the tailbone off the ground. But I'm not going super high. It's just a little bit and then go the other way south by pressing the tailbone down, reaching the sit bones forward and then north and south. Now what I'm looking for is to keep my legs still, weight in my heels and then I'm keeping the ribs connected too. My ribs are stable and anchored. We don't want to start lifting the chest or going into a big arch, okay? It's about controlling the pelvis individually, isolating the movement in only the pelvis, which is really, truly uh, the benefits of this type of modality, this type of format is that you learn how to isolate certain specific muscle groups which will create a dynamic movement and a safe movement and that you will be able to continue to progress as long as you have these foundations. All right, so now we go east, west or right and left. So start by pressing down on the right side. I think of my femur pressing down. The left side gets lighter and then switch, press the left side down, the right side gets lighter. Right press is down, left press is down. Now this is challenging. This is challenging for me. Um, and what you're looking for again is the legs don't move. The weight is still in your heels. And you're also avoiding any ribs translating here, which the ribs want to move, right? Because they're way more mobile than the pelvis. So think about using your core to anchor the ribs. 
and start to wake up more of the lower abdominals, the outer hips, inner thighs, and then all the pelvic floor. Your whole pelvic floor is like a diamond. It has a front, back, and sides. So we're working more of like the sides of that diamond. It also can feel weird. <laughs> That's normal if it feels weird at first, if it's new for you. All right, Ooh, Kelly, kisses. Thank you. All right, let's come into center now. This is called around the world. You're gonna move from a north tilt to east, south, west, and continue in the same direction. And then we'll switch. All right, start with the north, curl the tail. And then to east, press the left femur down. And then south, reach the sit bones. And then west, right sit bone, right femur down. And then north, keep going. Left, south, right, north. Now it's getting tricky, right? Because you have to keep those legs still and your ribs down. And your body, what happens naturally is it wants to compensate. It wants to use the bigger muscles before using the smaller muscles, the slow twitch muscles. But we're trying to train the slow twitch muscles, which take more patience and more focus. Keep going, find your directions of your compass. <laughs> Kelly's whining a little bit. What are you looking at over there? We're just doing our pelvis around the world. <laughs> All right, switch directions. So moving into west, right sit bone, right femur, and then south, and then left femur. And then north, right, south, left, north, right, south, left, and north. Notice if, one, if this direction feels easier, harder, same. Do you feel more sensation in certain parts of the pelvis? Do you feel anything happening around the glutes, hamstrings? Try to really tune into your body here. The only truth, right? The only truth we have in this world is the sun, the moon, and our body, our mind. So we can learn so much from these truths. Know thyself, right? That's the most famous spiritually awakened quote out there, right? Know thyself, so know your body. All right, good work. One more time, finish your circle. We are now ready to do corkscrew. So corkscrew is challenging because you're using leg circle movement with two legs at the same time. So you've got to stabilize, you've got to anchor, you've got to use your core. You can choose to go into individual leg circles instead, all right? But let's see the, how this feels. Bring both legs up, weight down into the femurs, feel the sacrum bearing down. Use your co-contraction, your core to find your abdominal wall. Here we go, we're gonna rotate to the left and then bring the legs together and around. So you're rotating in the hip sockets, right? Keep going the same direction. Keep going around. Your circle is up to you how size, what size you wanna go for. Bigger does not mean better, all right? Bigger actually can mean that we're using less of the slow twitch or we're using less mindfulness, right? So just know note to yourself, know thyself. What am I feeling? What do I need to feel more alignment, to feel more mindfulness? Okay, let's go one more this direction. 
and then we switch, go the other way, rotate, the knees are pointing the same direction. And one direction might feel easier, right? Especially if you always use the same leg to walk forward or to walk upstairs, that side is gonna be stronger. Something to think about, right? Keep the legs together, work those adductors, keep the feet together, rotate in the pelvis. Notice the pelvis it doesn't rock. Keep it nice and grounded. So much deep core work, right? One more, one more circle. Beautiful, bend the knees, circle the knees, circle the hips. All right, great. We have just enough time for one more exercise. So we're going to flip around and come into prone. We're going to swan. Take your hands under your shoulders, bending the elbows back, forehead on the ground. Now use the tops of your feet to press, anchor your, your sacrum bearing it straight down into the floor, feeling your lower glute creases working. Take an inhale, long spine. Exhale, lift the head, chest. Imagine a marble is rolling down your back. This is also kind of like cobra, yeah? Inhale, long spine to come down. In mat, we call it swan. In yoga, we call it cobra. Inhale, long spine. Exhale, lift up. There's a marble rolling down your back. Bear the sacrum. Inhale, long spine to come down. Okay, one more we're gonna hold. Inhale, long spine. Exhale, lift up. See how high you can go without lifting the shoulder blades. Anchor the shoulder blades down and wide across your back. Bear the sacrum, keep the glutes working even though the pelvis is coming up. One breath here, long spine. And exhale to come all the way down. Beautiful, beautiful work. So let's come into a child's pose. Keep your knees wide. Forehead on the floor. Press into the pinky fingers. Open mouth, exhale. Inhale, long spine. Exhale. Wonderful work. <clears throat> Let's come on up and cross your legs, your knees, I should say. Cross your knees on top of each other. Stay seated. Weight in the pelvis. So my knees are crossed, my feet are kind of hip distance, a little wider. And this is Gomukhasan. This is a piriformis stretch. Sitting up nice and tall. And we'll add the arms. So take the, um, so I've got my left leg. So I'm gonna take my right arm up. So the opposite arm. And your hand can go to your elbow or your hand can go to your hand. And then press your head back into your arm. Take an inhale to grow tall. And exhale, hinge from your hips. So you're working actively, eccentrically, to come into a fold without collapsing your chest. Keep the hips down. One breath here. And now inhale, come on up. Stay here, we're gonna take a twist, turning over the, the direction of that leg, the top leg. Look over that top leg. We're not using the arms, we're just rotating from our core. Good, inhale, come into center. Release the arms, switch your legs, just do a little can-can. Find the knees are stacked. Weight in the hips, feet are wide. Sit up nice and tall, lift up the core, and then take the opposite arm up 
hand to elbow or hand to hand. Press your head back, feel the length through your chest. And then exhale, start to hinge from your hips. In Gomukhasan. They call this cow face pose because our body looks like a cow face. That's what they say. I think the, leg, I think the knees are like the nose of the cow. <laughs> All right, inhale, come into center. We're gonna take our rotation. As you rotate the heart across the top leg. This is all coming from the work of your core. Stay for one more breath to grow tall as you inhale. Exhale to twist. Beautiful. Go ahead and release the arms. Take the feet together, butterfly. Flap your wings. Weight in the pelvis, sit up tall. And then exhale, hinge from your hips. Stay for one more breath. Feel very proud of the work you've done today that you showed up on your mat. You're moving your body, you're moving the energy. It's how we move through life, right? We move through emotions, through blocks. We have to keep moving, move the energy. All right, come on up, cross the legs, we'll close together. Inhale, reach the arms up, feel the energy filling into you. Exhale, hands to the heart. Inhale, reach up, fill up with positivity. Exhale, let go of what does not serve you. Inhale, intention. Exhale, any blocks. Thank you so much. Great work today. See you next time. I'll just um, 